Birdline Mixer Lab is an application for customising mixer skins for Samplitude and Sequoia. There's no need to have any previous Birdline skins installed for this to work. It will create a unique mixer skin based on the editing options of the application. So I'm going to show you how to use it. I'm going to begin by going to Mixer and set Samplitude version. You can choose from Pro X3 up to Pro X5 and Sequoia 14 up to Sequoia 16. I'm going to choose Samplitude Pro X5. Next, you need to choose the theme you want to edit from the drop down list. You have black and white, classic, dark blue, dark sweet, default. Elegant, Flexi and Light Green. You can also edit the multi-track mixer if you prefer that. This will give you narrower channels allowing you to fit more on your screen. But for this I'm going to use the standard mixer. I'm going to start off with the basic section here. You can create extra auxiliary sends up to 12. And the same with plug-in slots up to 12. So I currently have four auxiliary sends and four plug-in slots and I'm going to change it to six of each. So I can do that from the drop down list. I'm going to select use EQ and now when I do that the EQ appears in the mixer. You can also hide or show the delay at the top of the channel. I prefer to keep it enabled. This is very useful for entering positive or negative delay values. Below we have the fader meter size, currently it's small. I'll minimize the EQ to give us more space below. So you can switch the fader length from small to medium and to large. I'm going to choose medium for this. Open the EQ again. So that's the basic section. The next section is the pan EQ knobs look. It's set to two colors. This means if I move the pan, it will show orange to the right and blue to the left. And the same with EQ, orange to the right, blue to the left. I can choose one color, A, which means it will be blue both ways. Or one color, B, which means it's orange both ways. So you have a choice of those three settings. You can also change the knob design. For example, the track pan knob is knob one, but we also have knob two, knob three, knob four, knob five, knob six. So I'm going to use knob five. So the pan changes to knob 5. And you can do the same with the track EQ knobs. I'll use knob 5 there just to match it up. And again for the master pan you can change that as well. Just to be consistent I'll keep everything knob 5. So they are all set to knob 5 including the solo section. So that's how you use the Pan EQ knobs section. The next is the peak meters look. If you press the play button you can animate the meters which is very useful. Num lights on means the numbers and the metering are synchronized. So you can see the numbers are illuminated following the metering. If I turn num lights off the numbers are no longer illuminated along with the metering. And you can change the gradient here to medium gradient, solid gradient, thin gradient 2, medium gradient 2, and solid gradient 2. So I'll choose solid gradient 1 for the tracks. 
And for the mixer master output, I'll choose solid gradient one as well. I'll turn the meter preview off now. In the next section, we have active buttons. So if I press any of the buttons, they are just flat colors. If I switch to glow up, the buttons do exactly that. They have a slight sheen to them. Quite subtle, but a bit different. And with the faders, you have different choices. Fader 1, Fader 2, Fader 3, Fader 4, and Fader 5. I think I'll use Fader 3 for this example. And below that you have optimized for, and you have four resolution settings. I have it set to 1920 by 1080, which is HD. Uh, you can use 1366, which is probably more of a laptop size, 1440, or 2560. The next section I'm going to look at is the visible slots section. When all the slots are showing, you have six, and when you press the minus, only four are showing. Same with the plug-in slots. But you may want to change it so that only two are showing when minimized, meaning the other four are hidden. So you can edit that by clicking on visible slots. So we have four showing, and the ones below the line are the hidden ones. So if I click the minus, I can reduce the visible slots to two. So click OK, and I can have two slots showing when minimized, or six slots when maximized. This is very useful if you don't want to have all the slots showing at once, and it gives you a bit more screen space if you need it. And that's with all of them showing, all visible slots. You have the AUX plugin EQ color, and click on that, and you can customize the colors of all these sections. AUX post color, for example. You can choose a new color from the color chooser. So you see there now that color. AUX slot active color. I'll try green for that. Plugin slot active color. Maybe a blue. EQ slot active color. I'll try that pink color. So now when the EQ is active, the text is pink. So when the plugins are active, they are now blue. And the auxes, when they are active, they are now a kind of lime green. So that's very flexible for changing all the colors. I'll click OK there. The next is sections back color. This lets you change the color of the auxiliary and of the bus, although they have to share the same color. They can't be separate, unfortunately. You can also change the color of the MIDI channel and also the surround channel and also the selected track color. So I'm going to use the color picker to change the color of the AUX bus channel. Also, I'm changing the back color of the MIDI channel. Let's try a darker color for that. Also the surround back color. And also I'm changing the selected track color, that green. And the selected frame color is the frame around the selected mixer channel. So I think I'll choose white. So now we have a white frame around the selected mixer channel. If you want to check out the selected track color, just click on the track name and it will preview the color which I chose in the sections window. See, so it says selected now. And track two, if I click on that, it will say selected. So that's previewing the color which was chosen. 
You can always tweak any of the colours by opening the back colour editor again. You can then choose a new colour from the colour palette. Which brings me to something I should also mention. If you click Define Custom Colours, it will extend the box to the right and you can create and save your own custom colours. To do this, select one of the custom colour slots to begin with, then move the cursor around in the colour picker, and when you have something you like, you just click Add to Custom Colours, and you have a custom colour. So, in essence, you can have 16 custom colour slots, which is very useful. Finally, we have the Mixer Text Colours. You can change the text colours for all elements of the mixer, so it's very flexible. So I'll change some of the text colours, just to give you an idea. So I'm going to change the colour of the text for the orc's name. I'll change it to brown for this. Plugins Active is black at the moment, so I'll change that to white. I'm going to change the EQ value text to that pink colour. So that's quite nice for differentiating the different EQ values. So that's how you can edit the mixer text colours. Extremely flexible for those who want to go into that kind of detail. So when you've done all your changes and customizations, you can name the mixer skin in that box below. Then you click create mixer skin and the new mixer skin has been created and saved. So I've opened Samplitude Pro X5 and this is the Magix camo skin. And if I click here, I can open the mixer, which is the camo mixer. And I want to switch to the new custom bird line skin I created in Mixer Lab. So I'm clicking where it says S here. And at the bottom here, it says custom. So I'm going to choose that. And there it is. So we have all the changes I made, um, the colors. Okay, they're a bit random, but um, it was really just to show you how to do it. This is the selected color for the track. We have the MIDI tracks here and the bus and auxiliary tracks. And you can see all the text I changed has been saved in this mixer skin and the new knobs and also the aux. You see I have the two showing there and if I click down you have the six showing. And the same here, if I click that you've got the two showing. One last thing, you may decide you want to edit the custom skin you created. So you can go to the file menu here and choose load mixer skin and choose the version which is Pro X5 suite. And we have custom one in the list, which is the one I created earlier. And then you can make some changes there. So say we can go to the sections back color and we'll change the MIDI back color to something else, a light blue. And then you can just rename this custom skin to custom two, create mixer skin. So custom two skin has been created and you can now choose between custom one or custom two within Samplitude. So it's a useful app for creating your own mixer skins using the Birdline design and it has great customization options as well. Anyway, that's how you use the Birdline Mixer Lab. I hope you found it useful. Cheers for now.